Okay, so this video will be a short introduction to hypothesis testing when dealing with dependent samples. Now, samples are dependent if every value from one sample can be naturally paired with a value from the other sample. The simplest example of this is the following example. Imagine you have a group of people that undergo a given experiment and you have a measurement before and after the experiment. So naturally you will pair the value before and the value after the experiment for each person. Another example would be suppose you have an experiment and you use pairs of twins. Then you would split up the pairs of twins into two groups, one being the control group, the other being the experimental group. And if you want to see that the experiment has an effect, you will pair up the values from the control and the experimental group in a way that you will pair up the values for each corresponding twin. And you will see that this is the essence of dependent samples. And let's just see quickly how we will then proceed to formulate a hypothesis testing. So imagine that you have before values, and after values. So suppose we have a group of people undergoing some type of experiment. We have a measurement before the experiment, the measurement after the experiment, and we are going to ask simply, did the experiment have an impact on the measurements? Suppose that person 1 scores x1 before the experiment and scores y1 after the experiment. Suppose person 2 scores x1, x2 before the experiment, y2 after the experiment. Suppose we have a sample of n people, so person n scores xn before the experiment and scores yn after the experiment. Well, we will calculate for each subject the difference. And here it doesn't matter if you do after minus before or before af minus after. All that matters is when you formulate your two hypotheses, H0 and H1, that you are consistent with your choice of difference. Suppose we say here we do after minus before. So y1 minus x1 is our first difference, which we can call d1. The second difference for person 2 is y2 minus x2. And finally, the nth person gives us the nth difference, yn minus xn. So now we have our n differences. Well, the first thing we need is our sample mean and our sample deviation for the differences. So as always, since we use d for difference, we will use d bar for the sample mean. And again, we simply add our n differences and divide by n. So from this, we obtain our sample mean difference. And then we will find our sample deviation for the differences. So we can call this SD. S for sample deviation, D for differences. And as always, if you remember, we sum for each value of d, the value, so d1, d2, and so forth, minus the average difference, but we sum the differences squared. We divide by, since we have the sample standard deviation, the sample size, we have n values, minus 1. This, of course, gives the sample variance, the square root of that, gives the sample standard deviation for the difference. The question is now, what is our test statistic? Well, there are two possibilities. If we have a normal distribution for the scores, any sample size will do. If, on the other hand, we don't know that we have a normal distribution, we will need a sample size of at least 30 so we can quote the central limit theorem. In either case, we have a very 
well-known statistic. We take our sample mean difference, let me just use mu d, this will be the true mean difference, right? All we have is a sample of our population. If you were to sample the entire population, then you would get the true mean difference. So again, this is a true value. that you would obtain if you were to sample the entire population. And now we can build our statistic for our differences. This will be our test statistic. As always, we take our sample mean, d bar, we subtract our true mean difference, mu d, we divide by the deviation of the average, which is the individual deviation of the sample SD, and if you remember, over the root of the sample size. And under the central limit theorem, if we have more than 30 values in our sample of differences, or if we already know that we have a normal distribution, we will get approximately a T random variable, and the degrees of freedom are simply n minus 1. So the number of differences minus 1 are the degrees of freedom. That is our statistic. And now the only thing left over to consider is what are possible hypotheses for H0 and for H1? Let's put them here. H0, when you have a test of hypothesis for the mean, in the case of dependent samples, well, if you think of it, H0 is the status quo hypothesis, the hypothesis of no change. Well, no change means exactly that there is no change. So the measurements before the experiment and after the experiment should be the same. Therefore, the difference should be equal to zero. And so H0 will claim that the true mean difference between the before and after measurements will simply be equal to zero. So this will always be your H0 in the case of a test of hypothesis for two dependent samples. H1, and as always, of course, we will be under the assumption of H0. And if you think of H1, there are three possibilities. You may claim to have a negative difference for the after and before scores, so mu d is less than zero. You could claim that the after scores are bigger than the before scores, in which case after minus before is positive, so you could go with mu d as positive, or you could be more conservative and simply claim that there is a difference, and so the true mean difference is not equal to zero. And that's it. So always keep in mind that because we're considering differences, and H0 is the hypothesis of no change, the mean difference must be zero. The true population mean difference must be zero. This will be our default assumption. And we can formulate three possible counter hypotheses that the mean difference is negative, positive, or not equal to zero. So with this idea and our statistic, we can now test hypotheses with two dependent samples. And this will be the topic of our next video. We will consider an example of a hypothesis for two dependent samples.